Now on its 27th year, the school year 2024 to 2025, the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad is the oldest and most reputable nationwide mathematics competition among high school students. After its trial run in 1984, it was officially launched in 1986 and has been held annually since 2007. The country's contestants to the International Mathematical Olympiad are chosen from the top students who compete in the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad. The PMO is a project of the Mathematical Society of the Philippines and the Department of Science and Technology Science Education Institute. Welcome back to the PMO video series. My name is Emmanuel Balete, and today we'll be discussing the sum and number of divisors of integers. A common question in contests is to ask for the number of divisors or the sum of positive divisors of an integer. So in this case, let's, let's say uh, 2016. How do we solve this problem? Well, first we need to know what are the divisors of 2016. And we have some nice representations, uh, some nice ways to represent the divisors of 2016. For example, you might be familiar with the prime factorization. And this is neat, it's a very compact representation. But it, at first glance, it doesn't seem to tell us anything about the number of divisors or their sum, right? So let's try something else. Maybe you could list out all the divisors uh, using the two column method. So in the first column, you start from one and then you, you work up one, two, three, four, five. Every time you get a divisor of 2016, you list, you take note of that number and you also take note of the quotient on the other column when you divide 2016 by the first number. So and by, by doing that, you can systematically get all the divisors of 2016. Okay, so now this is nice. You can, you can easily get the number by counting, um, but it's a bit tedious and it doesn't tell us anything about the sum unless you want to add up all these numbers, which is also very tedious. So instead we'll be trying another kind of representation, which is based on the prime factorization, slightly modified, which looks like this. Uh, okay, so ignore the, the middle and the right, just focus on this left part first. So this is the one for 2016. Remember 2016 is two raised to five times three squared times seven raised to one. So what we've done is uh, we've made three columns, for one for each prime, and you just list all the powers from two raised to zero until the highest power that divides 2016, okay? And what are we going to do here is we're going to choose one number from each column and then multiply those numbers together. For example, let's say I choose two raised to one, three squared, seven raised to zero. So if I multiply those together, I'll get 18. And 18 is indeed a factor of 2016. So why does this work? Uh, this works because all factors of 2016 should be of the form two raised to a times three raised to b times seven raised to c, right? It's not possible for the factor of 2016 to have some new prime. Uh, the, the primes in the divisors should also be two, three, and seven. Uh, so yeah, so this method of choosing one number from each column will allow you to generate all the divisors of 2016. And this representation is neat because now we have, we can easily find the number of divisors. The number of divisors is the number of ways to choose one number from each column. And how, how many ways are there to do that? Well, the first column has six choices. The second column has three choices. The third column has two choices. So if you multiply those together, there are 36 divisors. Now, how about the sum? The sum is a little trickier. We, we use a neat factoring. So you can actually factor the sum of divisors like this. And hopefully 
the representation above makes it easier to see why this works. Because this product, when you expand this product, what you're really doing is you are choosing one number, one term from each factor, and then you're multiplying them together. And you're doing this for all possible choices of choosing one term from each factor, right? You, you do it for all possible choices. And then you add all of those products together. So you're going to add this together with, let's say, 2 raised to 0, 3 raised to 0, 7 raised to 0, and, and so on, right? You, when you ex fully expand that product, you will be able to get all the factors of 2016. And you, you will just add them all together. So this representation, I mean, this factoring does indeed capture the sum of all positive divisors of 2016. And this is neat because it's a lot easier to compute than adding a lot of numbers, right? This is 63 times uh, 13 times 8. And then if you compute, this is much easier to compute than adding a ton of numbers much less less arithmetic involved so that's neat um and okay let's look at two more examples here so i've placed two more examples this the one in the middle is for 210 right 210 is 2 raised to 1 times 3 raised to 1 times 5 raised to 1 times 7 raised to 1 how many divisors does 210 have the number of divisors is how many ways to choose one number from each column so how many ways are there to choose one number from each column? That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Because you have two choices in each column. So that gives you 16. And the sum of the divisors is 2 raised to 0 plus 2 raised to 1 times do the same thing for all the other primes. Uh, so that should give you 3 times 4 times 6 times 8, which is... 576. Okay, so this is a lot, uh, it's a very convenient formula because you can easily get the number and the sum of divisors. And finally, for the last number, you can try it on your own. This one is for 10,000. Now, what do we notice? What patterns do we notice about the two formulas we've been using? Um, for example, the number of divisors. The number of divisors just depends on the number of numbers in each column, right? How many numbers are there in each column? Uh, the number of numbers in a column is based on the highest exponent. If your highest exponent, for example, here it's 5, then this column has 6 numbers because you go from 0 to 5. The exponent goes from 0 to 5. Uh, in this one, the highest exponent is 2. So you have three numbers, two plus one, because you have to include zero. And finally, this one has two numbers because one plus one. And same thing for all the others, right? Based on that, we can generalize the, these properties to get this theorem. So if, if you have a general prime factorization, p sub one raised to k sub one, this is just a general prime factorization then the number of divisors, as we've mentioned, is take the prod, take the exponents, take all of the exponents, add one to each of them, because you're because remember the, the size of the column is exponent plus one. So add one to all the exponents and then multiply all the exponents together. And that gives you the number of positive divisors. Similarly, for the sum of positive divisors, like uh, just like we showed earlier, you you add up the numbers in each column. So from, from here, right, you add up the numbers in each column. So add the numbers here, add the numbers here, add the numbers here, and then you multiply those sums together. So that's the basis for the second formula for the sum of divisors. So these two are very helpful to note. And once you've familiar with these two, you can already, just from the prime factorization, you can find the number of divisors and the sum of positive divisors of any integer. Great. Now let's try applying these on some PMO problems.
from the this two problems from the 24th PMO. First, number 11. So how many positive integers n less than 2022 are there for which the sum of the odd positive divisors of n is 24? So pause the video here and then come back when you're ready to see the solution. Note, now the first thing we need to note is that we only want, we're only concerned with the odd divisors of n. Okay, we don't want all the divisors of n, so we need to keep note of that. We can't use the previous formula exactly as it was, since you only want the odd divisors. Okay, let's start with, let's say n is odd. Okay, we'll deal with the even numbers later, but let's keep things simple. Let's say n is odd. So the odd divisors of n uh, are simply all the divisors in this case, because n is odd. And remember that uh, we have this, this form for the sum of divisors, right? So you want that product. Uh, it's kind of complicated looking, but remember this is just the sum of each column multiplied together. So you've got this long product and you want it to be equal to 24. Okay. so. 24, we can factor 24 in a lot of ways, right? So maybe you could have two times two times six or three times eight. So there are lots of ways to split 24 into factors. But note that um, each of the factors on the left needs to be at least four. This is at least four, why? Because the smallest prime factor is three. Right? The smallest prime factor is three. So each of these factors on the left are at least one plus three. They're at least one plus three, which means this is at least four, this is at least four, and this is at least four. So you cannot have more than two prime factors. Because the moment you have three, the product will be at least 64, right? Four times four times four. So we know for sure that n the odd the odd number n either has only one prime factor or it has two prime factors you can't have more than that so let's consider those two cases case one one prime factor so let's say n has only one prime factor in other words n is just p raised to k for some p and some k uh, which gives us the sum is 1 plus p plus p squared until p raised to k is equal to 24. And now with some trial and error, some check, some guessing, we can try, for example, let's try 3. Uh, you will see that 3 doesn't work because 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared is 13. If you add another one, that already goes over. And for the next primes, one plus five doesn't work and you can't do five squared anymore because five squared is too big. Similarly, all the succeeding primes, you cannot use the square. You cannot go up to, you cannot go up to P squared because it's too big, which means the only option left is one plus 23 equals 24. So N in this case must be 23. Okay, so that's the um, that's the solution when when n has only one prime factor. Let's try case two. If you have two prime factors, so we can say n is equal to p raised to a times q raised to b, and you want one plus p plus so on times 1 plus q, and so on, this product needs to be equal to 24. And again, each factor here, as mentioned earlier, is at least equal to 4, right? So the only way to get a product of 24 must be to do 4 times 6, because each factor needs to be at least 4. Uh, and from there, it's easy to see that the only possible solution is to have p raised to a is 3 raised to 1. 
and q raised to b is 5 raised to 1, so that you have 1 plus 3 times 1 plus 5. In other words, n is equal to 15. So if what we can conclude is if n is odd, if odd n, then the only solutions are 15 and 23. Okay, but we still need to deal with the even numbers, right? How about even numbers? Well, the, the important observation here is that the for an even number, the odd divisors of n, so let's say, okay, let's say 2016. It's an even number, and it has this, it's 2 raised to 5 and 3 squared times 7. But if you want to look at only the odd divisors of 2016, then essentially you just ignore this power of 2, right? All the odd divisors of 2016 are simply all the odd divisors of 63. In other words, if you multiply an integer by 2 or divide by 2, it doesn't affect the odd divisors. Okay. So that tells us the only even, the only possible even solutions come from multiplying 15 and 23 by some power of 2. So for the even solutions, the only possible even solutions are you take 15 and you keep multiplying by 2. So 30 also works, 60 also works. And all of these numbers will work because they all share the same odd divisors until 1,000. So remember, we only go until 2022. So we stop at 1,920. And for 23, we do the same thing, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, until you reach the limit. OK, so that's the two, next one's too big. And then we count. So there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are a total of 15 numbers in those two lists, which tells us the answer for this problem is letter D, 15. All right, now let's go to uh, number 18 from the same year. Let m and n be relatively prime positive integers. If m cubed times n raised to 5 has 209 positive divisors, then how many positive divisors does m raised to 5 times n cubed have? Again, pause the video and try it out on your own first, and then come back to see the solution. The important thing in this problem, which is very subtle, is that m and n are relatively prime. This is actually a very important part of the problem because this tells us that m and n don't share any prime factors. For let's say m is equal to, because let, let's see what happens if they do share a prime factor, right? If m is equal to 2 times 3 and n equals 2 times 5, then m cubed times n raised to 5, if you want to find the prime factorization of this, you need to also consider the common prime factor. Uh, and that will account into your prime factorization. In other words, because m and n are relatively prime, it's actually a lot simpler to find the prime factorization of m cubed times n raised to 5. Okay. Now remember, the number of divisors, remember that uh, to find the number of divisors, you take the exponents and then you add 1. Remember, it was something like this. Take the exponents, add 1, multiply them all together. And we want this to be equal to, wait, sorry, you can't, we need to use a different variable. Uh, let's use x. We want this to be equal to 209. But what is 209 when you try to factor it? 209 is just 11 times 19, uh, which means that m cubed times n raised to 5, you m cubed times n raised to 5, you actually really only have two choices. You either take 209. So it's either p raised to 208, where p is some prime, or you take p 
raised to 10 times q raised to 18. Okay, because this is the only way that um, this is the only way for your number of divisors to be equal to 209. You can easily check that the first case is impossible. Um, there's no way to, to get p raised to 208. Actually, it's fine. Let's go through it. So let's say case one. Case one, it's p raised to 208. Remember that m and n are relatively prime. They don't share any prime factors, which means it's impossible for p to divide both m and n. So the only solution is m is equal to 1, and n raised to 5 is p raised to 208, or n is equal to 1, and m raised to 3 is p raised to 208. You can easily check both of these are impossible. Uh, you will not get an integer solution from this. So there are no solutions in this case. Case two, m cubed times n raised to five is p raised to 10 times q raised to 18. Again, m and n don't share any prime factors. So either your only options are m is equal to one, and then n raised to five needs to be all of that which is clearly impossible because 18 is not divisible by five or n is equal to one and the m cube is equal to this, also impossible. Or m, uh, m takes the p power and n takes q. This is also impossible. Or the last case, m needs to take all the powers of q well, n takes all the powers of p, which is possible. So now you have m. This is the only possible case. So we reject these three. Only this one is possible. So m must be q raised to 6, and n must be p squared. For some primes, p and q. OK, but this isn't what the question is actually asking yet, right? We need to know how many positive divisors does m raised to 5 times n cubed have? Well, uh, we can easily find that now because m raised to 5 times n cubed will be equal to q raised to 30 times p raised to 6. So remember, p and q are distinct primes. So this is already the prime factorization. Uh, and that tells us the number of divisors must be 1 plus 30 times 1 plus 6 equals 217. So that is the answer for this problem. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot and see you next time.